All right, guys, I know that initially I had planned on making a field artillery gun, but in setting up for the cannon barrel, that's a picture, by the way. That's a pretty good picture, isn't it? That looks like it's three-dimensional. In setting up for the cannon barrel, in some of the taper-turning displays that I did for you, the demonstrations in previous videos, I've had this blank sitting around, and i just got to do something with it. It's too pretty to just not work on. And I will eventually show you the commercial polish that I just did this end with to see, you know, once it takes the tarnish off. I was really blown away with the result. So I'll plug that later on in the video, maybe in a different video. But I'm not going to get all crazy with this. You know, then again, maybe I will. But let's uh, spin this up, finish this barrel off, grab a piece of wood, saw it down, and make this chassis and wheels. Let's get to it. Okay, to start the outside taper this compound is set on a three degree taper this way and I will not be able to use the live center because the compound is going to get in the way we are going to replicate this beaded element right here at this location and this location and there will be a small trough here before we put the ball on the end and I'll take it over to the mill and I will put the cross hole in it the trunnion hole I believe that is or the trunnion mount location before I do the ball in the back that way I can squeeze this thing lengthwise and put the hole in, then bring it back and hold it on a tapered bushing. So I'm hoping that the three degrees will clean up by the time it gets to the three quarter mark. Calculated it should be okay, but we're going to have to find that out uh, momentarily. Alright, let's get after it. Everything is going to be done with the compound and the cross slide. I'm going to have a number on the cross slide that assures me that this tool will stay on tracking on that taper so I can jump over these islands and come back to that number and continue the taper with the compound. Shouldn't be a big deal. But I like watching brass fly so let me reposition this camera and let's make some brass fly. Alright to anyone that has already watched the cannon barrel turning video I do apologize for repeating some of the material but this one is a little bit shorter and I got to start this project somewhere. So before I have the sufficient time to do all the spoked wheels and all the ornate elements of the other one, I'm going to knock this deck gun out. So uh, let's do these elements here and here and terminate the taper closest to the chuck. Let's see what happens. This is a high speed steel tool. It's about a 10 degree, maybe 5 degree tapered tool with about a 60 thou diameter radius tip and it should give quite a nice finish. Most of these operations are going to be done with the compound. Alright, the first thing we got to do is remove a lot of this material off the outside so we can get down to a workable semi net shape. I want the other two elements that I'm going to add to be somewhat symmetrical to the one in the front. And since this is a non-blueprint, just conceptual sketch kind of job, the whole thing is going to be by eye. Do be careful when you're doing something like this. Uh, if the tool itself is not the leading part of the setup, that you're not so focused on the part that you end up running your tool holder into your chuck. That's a real easy thing to do, and I'll bet at least one of you guys out there has a tool holder with a Dale Earnhardt skid mark on the side from the chuck jaws where you ran into it. You'll only do it one time. It'll start your heart pretty quick. All the moves here are done with the compound. If you look in the background, you can see the carriage is sitting still, and the compound is the only thing that is advancing. And for the body of the cannon, all the three-degree taper work that you see being done, uh, the cross slide is always returning to the same number. So if we jump an element like we're about to do here, this is all compound move. I'm going to pull off with the cross slide right here feed forward with the compound and back into the same number as it was on the other side but since it's a taper and the compound has moved forward it gives us a continuous taper as if those rings were not even there so let's peel it off and form these elements and uh, just watch how it comes together nice little project
We're going to fine tune the height of these elements. We're going to try to make them as symmetrical as possible. And when you get to the larger diameter, you start to run out of material. You just may have to cheat a couple of things here and there to make sure that it looks like what you want it to look like. And if you have to reduce the side support rings, that's what I'm doing now, these little rings on either side of the beaded part, if you can take them low, then you can reduce or increase the height accordingly of the center part. So if I take those a little bit tighter to the barrel, visually they'll look similar. And you can see that the ones in the front are much higher than the ones in the middle. So for symmetry, I'm going to take them all down to a visual constant. And the one on the front is quite a bit thicker than the other two. Not for long. Once again, everything is done with the compound and the cross slide. Carriage is not moving. Unless, of course, you run out of stroke, then reposition the entire carriage and come up with a new number for the cross slide. I call this freestyling. It's real. It's uh, almost therapeutic to be able to grab a piece of material and just chop on it until it looks good, not have to worry about dimensions. And that's exactly what this project is. Going to go through a variety of tools to finish this off. Going to use a 45 degree chamfer tool to break the sharp edges and start the radius features. Then I'm going to use a small jeweler file that I have sanded off the teeth on the side and radius the corners so that I can actually register that file on finished surfaces without leaving scratch marks on it. I got a couple of files that I've sanded down, modified and ground that way just specifically for this purpose. And it works really well. And sorry if my hand's going to block the camera. It's virtually impossible to do this supporting the file safely without blocking a line of sight from where the camera's positioned. So I do apologize for that. This is a 45 degree tool. I'm breaking the sharp edges on the lower parts and I'm adding a eh, not a generous chamfer, but a reasonable chamfer to the top of the raised part. And for this, I am using the carriage. It's just a lot quicker to get between locations. High speed tool. And now I will reduce the larger section of this element to allow it to look more like the first one.
want to point out sometimes when you're compounding something, compounding an angle on a part, whether it's a bore or an OD taper, depending on the force that you're putting on the crank, the compound itself could be oscillating back and forth. So when you're done cutting a taper and you put a shine on it, if you see ripples or lines or just any indication but very symmetrical indication it is probably from the pressure on the crank as you're doing it so use two hands turn it halfway 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 and just focus specifically on the dial and don't get on it like a gorilla if it's too tight unloosen it how's that sound right, let's take this over to the mill put some trunnion holes in it and uh, turn the ball on the back